Hi everyone, Bria here from Esch Actuarial and in today's video I'm talking about what you should do every single month of this year in order to become an in-demand actuarial candidate by the end of the year. So this video is going to be jam-packed with different things that you should be doing every single month to make sure that you are doing all the things you really need to be doing to get noticed by actuarial employers. That means if you are considering the actuarial career or you want to get started now, then this is the perfect video for you. Remember, I do have a comment contest going on, so if you comment down below on this video or any video that I release in January, then you will be eligible to win $250 towards your next actuarial exam. All the details about that are going to be down below in the description. Now let's get into this video. You might be surprised to learn that I actually don't recommend you start your actuarial journey with passing an exam. That's not where you should start. What I do suggest is that you start by learning Excel and even maybe go into some VBA. Excel and VBA are used all the time in actuarial positions, so it's really, really important that you get a good grasp on those early on in your actuarial journey. The reason that I recommend you start learning them now is because in the next step, you're actually going to be using those Excel skills, hopefully in a real life job. So really quickly, let me jump to my computer screen and I'm going to show you some of the resources that are available for members of the Actuary Accelerator community to help them learn Excel. Like I said, Excel is super important, so we have lots of resources in there to make sure learning Excel and VBA is as easy as possible for you. Okay, so once you get into the Actuary Accelerator community, all you need to do is go to resources by category and you'll see the technical skills section. That will take you to this page here where there's a video that explains all the technical skills an aspiring actuary needs to know in order to be a really good candidate for actuarial positions. And then down below, you'll see that we have tons of Excel sessions here. So they're labeled lesson one to nine. They give you all the information you need step by step. Like it starts from very beginner, never even heard of Excel level, all the way to advanced Excel skills and goes into some VBA, which is a programming language that allows you to automate tasks in Excel. So you will learn all that in here. Then once you're done learning through those courses, you can actually go on to complete some Excel projects that I've created. And there's even an example Excel employer test because sometimes employers will test aspiring actuaries during their interview to see if they really have the level of skills that they say they do using Excel. So all of these combined together are going to ensure that you are a really good candidate for actuarial positions in terms of your Excel and VBA skills. So after you learn Excel, which is going to probably take you about a month to learn that, then you can start looking into stepping stone positions. Stepping stone positions are jobs that are related to the actuarial career, and they're going to give you some really, really good experience that actuarial employers are going to value later on. So this could be a position like an underwriting position or a data analysis type of position. Uh, any position in an insurance company can be beneficial if you're learning a lot about insurance and how it works. Those types of jobs are going to give you a lot of knowledge and skills and experience that actuarial employers will be looking for. After you learn Excel, I recommend the stepping stone job because oftentimes you're going to need your Excel skills in order to get a stepping stone job. Since stepping stone jobs have a lot of the same qualities and skill set requirements as an actuarial job, they will often want you to know how to use Excel. That's why Excel is the very first step in your actuarial journey. You might have noticed that I haven't mentioned passing an exam yet. That's because you are going to be able to get your stepping stone position now and then you can start studying for your exam after. That means you're going to be able to gain experience in your stepping stone position at the same time as you're studying for your exam later on. And then that experience is going to build up over time as you're doing other things that you need to be doing in order to get an actuarial position. There are lots of resources in the Actuary Accelerator community related to stepping stone jobs. So right now I'm going to switch to my computer screen and show you those resources. For stepping stone positions, all you have to do is go to resources by category and go to the job resources. Then you're going to see this video called finding stepping stone positions. You'll come to a page that looks just like 
like this, it explains exactly what stepping stone positions are and how they will help you in achieving success in the actuarial field. It also gives lots of examples of what kind of jobs are stepping stone jobs. And there's lots of resources in here to help you get one as well because a resume is going to be really important. So we have a whole course here about how to create a really good resume. Plus there's LinkedIn networking tips and all that sort of stuff, interview success, uh, videos that will all help you in getting your first stepping stone job. Since getting a stepping stone job requires you to create a really good resume like I suggest in the Actuary Accelerator community, plus it involves you doing a lot of interviews and applying to jobs, this all takes a lot of time. So you can expect this stage of your actuarial journey to take about one to two months to complete. Next is passing your first actuarial exam. So if you're planning to work in Canada or the US, then you're going to take exam P or exam FM offered by the Society of Actuaries first. Those will be your first two exams that you take. It really doesn't matter which exam you take first, whether it's exam P or FM. Both of them are the easiest exams out of all the actuarial exams. So you'll definitely want to start with those. But for most people, they find exam FM the easiest. So if you're stuck on where to start, just go with exam FM and that'll be a great place to start. Now, I do have tons of recommendations on study materials. I will link to those down below in the description of this video so you can see where to go for study materials for your exams. There are also tons of resources in the Actuary Accelerator community to help you pass your exams. So right now I'm going to switch over to my screen and I'll show you what's inside the AAC so that you can see how it can help you pass your first actuarial exam. In the Actuary Accelerator community, we have tons of resources to help you pass your first exam. And Actually, I'm going to be adding exam P study materials in here really soon. If they're not already in here by the time you see this video, they will be in the next few days. So those are on the way. But you can also go to the exam resources section and go to this video called How to Study for Actuarial Exams. It goes in depth on exactly what you need to do to fully prepare for your actuarial exams. There are tons of examples in there and resources that are really going to help you. Plus, there's lots of other things in here for your exams, like a math Q&A forum and links to free exam resources, all that kind of stuff, so that you have everything you need to make sure that you are on the best track for passing your exam. Remember, I am having a comment contest for exam fees right now. It means if you comment on any of my videos that I post in January, you will have a chance to get $250 towards your next exam registration fee. So just comment down below, say whatever you want. I'd love to hear your concerns about passing the exams or just becoming an actuary in general, uh, why you want to become an actuary, anything you can think of, comment down below. Or if you have questions, ask those because those will each give you one entry into the comment contest. I will also leave details below in the description about the comment contest. Okay, so once you pass an exam, then the next step is to take a little break. You want to give yourself some time to refresh and relax a little when you've probably spent three to four months studying for an exam and you just don't want to go into your next exam right away. You want to take some time off. And during that time off, I recommend that you improve your skills in Excel and VBA even more. And for most people, that means doing projects in Excel and VBA. I am a big believer that if you actually use the Excel skills that you have learned in a course and apply them to real world projects, then it's going to make your resume so much stronger. So that means that you could maybe do something in your job that requires Excel. Maybe there's a project you could start working on that would require you to use your Excel skills on the job. Or maybe you know someone that owns a business and needs some support with Excel. Maybe you could do a project for them. You might even be able to volunteer your time and do a project for some sort of charity that needs your help. 
It doesn't matter how you do it, but if you can use your Excel experience and knowledge and apply it to real world situations in the real work environment, it's going to really help increase your chances of getting an actuarial job because you're not only showing actuarial employers that you have learned how to use Excel, but you're also proving that you can actually use it and apply those skills in real world situations. Once you've passed your first exam, you go right into learning more and more about VBA and Excel and starting to apply those skills in real world situations. Like I showed you earlier, in the Actuary Accelerator community, we have several projects that you could try to do in Excel, but I also do encourage you to take time to do projects in real world situations that people actually hire you to do. So by this point, you have learned Excel, which has taken you one to two months. Then you've worked on getting a stepping stone job, which you're hopefully working in and has taken you another one to two months. You've also passed an exam, which has probably taken you three to five months. You've done some Excel projects for real companies. That has all taken about eight to nine months of the year. Now, Next, you're going to pass another exam, and this is going to be the last thing you do in 2020 or in months nine to 12 of this year. So your next exam will be whichever you didn't already take. If you took exam P, then you're going to take exam FM. If you took exam FM before, then you're going to take exam P. You probably learned a lot about how to prepare for your exam and all that sort of stuff while you were studying for your exam the first time around. So this time around, your exam studying approach should be much more efficient, um, maybe easier and smoother, all that sort of stuff, since you do have prior experience. If you want help passing your exams, I also have programs to help with that. It's called the Study Strategy Program. Uh, in that program, I create a whole personalized study schedule for you and do regular accountability check-ins. So that might be another option for you if you want really in-depth personalized support in passing your exam. I have talked a lot about all the different steps that you need to take this year in order to become an in-demand actuarial candidate. I also talked a lot about the Actuary Accelerator community. This is my community designed to help aspiring actuaries just like you to go through all the stages that they need to in order to become in-demand actuarial candidates that are all working together to do the best that they can and succeed in the actuarial field. There are tons of resources like I showed you in the Actuary Accelerator community. So if you want access to that, I am giving you one a month for free, one month for free in the Actuary Accelerator community. The coupon code to get that is new year, all one word, new year. I will put that on the screen right here too. And you can go down into the description of this video and I will leave a link to the Actuary Accelerator community. So you can go claim your one month for free. And I would love to have you in there because there are over 200 other members and everyone in there is so supportive, so motivational. There are tons of resources to help you make your actuarial journey a success. Plus, I am in there answering questions all the time. I've created tons of resources to make this journey easier for you, and I would absolutely love to support you. So go check that out. You can get one month for free by using the coupon code NEW YEAR. I hope to see you in there, and if not, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.